so you understand who you might be promoting. Um, and then we're just going to do a quick, uh, if, it, if you don't mind, uh, kind of a pinning ceremony. Perfect. Uh, so Dan Phillips, you want to come up here first? I'm going to sit so I can move the microphone. Go. He's coming. Taking care of family business. I was afraid he had you by the nap of the oh. neck there for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, this is Dan Phillips. Dan has been a member of our department since 2017. He has proven himself a quality police officer and has done a phenomenal job as a member of the District Attorney's Office Anti-Crime Task Force. And he performed admirably during his time as Acting Sergeant. Dan is actually currently uh, an Acting Sergeant. Uh, I think most importantly, about the, the most important thing you need to know about Dan is that he's a great person. Dan truly cares about the people that he works with and the people that he serves. He is knowledgeable, motivated, and has shown interest in altering the culture of our agency to impact our officers more positively, enhance their careers, uh, better their family dynamic, and improve our agency's relationship with the community. He will be taking on a leadership role in peer bystander intervention, which has been identified as a law enforcement best practice when it comes to our duty to intervene. He's probably going to get sent on a call right now. <laughs> for all these reasons, I would like to recommend Officer Daniel Phillips for promotion to Sergeant. If the board agrees, your motion would be to promote Daniel Phillips to Sergeant effective immediately in rank and on payroll. I'll make that motion to accept Daniel Phillips as a Sergeant and immediately pay him what he's supposed to be paid. <laughs> I gave you the motion. <laughs> Just say so moved. So moved. I know, but I'm not supposed to do that anymore. <laughs> I would like to. I'll, I'll second the motion. Motion by Joyce, second by Molly. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Congratulations. Thank you. Don't stick them. <laughs> he gets different letters on his shirt. Mm -hmm. There we go. <laughs> That's a proud son. <laughs> Come on up here and shake our hands, yeah. buddy. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks for your work. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Appreciate it. Sergeant. Well, before you is Thomas Douglas. Tom has been with our agency since 2018. He has shown interest in multiple areas of law enforcement, but truly impressed our management staff with his performance during his time as an acting sergeant. He showed the ability to motivate his officers. He shows compassion and empathy with our public, and he has the respect of the entire department. Tom is a very quiet person until you get to know him. In fact, I was unaware that he even spoke for the first year that he was <laughs> However, once he's comfortable around you, he will show his true colors as the department cut up. He combines professionalism with humor to lower tensions and put people at ease, both inside and outside the agency. And we trust his judgment to supervise effectively. For all these reasons, I would like to recommend Officer Thomas Douglas for promotion to sergeant. If the board agrees, your motion will be to promote Thomas Douglas to sergeant, effective immediately in rank, but effective October 15th on payroll. I'll make that motion to accept Thomas Douglas as sergeant and effective immediately. Um, welcome. Thank and you. October 15th. On payroll, correct. Second. Second by Randy. 
Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Tom will be having his wife pin. Before you is Rylan Baronis. Uh, Rylan has been with our agency since 2018 as well. You will not find a single community event that he is not the first person to volunteer for. He loves working with people and clearly has a passion for helping others. He showed his leadership abilities long before we chose him in the acting sergeant role. In fact, some of the officers who worked with him took to calling him Sarge long before he even applied for the position. He is motivated, smart, and caring. He has shown interest in being involved in several different aspects of policing, and in fact, we will likely have to order him to reduce his activity in other areas to ensure that he can serve appropriately in this role. He is well-liked, respected, and we trust his judgment to supervise effectively. For these reasons, I would like to recommend Officer Rylan Baronis for promotion to sergeant. If the board agrees, your motion would be to promote Rylan Baronis to sergeant, effective immediately in rank, but effective October 15th on payroll. So moved, Rylan Baronis, uh, welcome as a sergeant, and October 15th will be the start date. Second? Start date, start, yeah. No, start hey, date hey, immediately, hey. immediately, sorry about that. Do I have a second? Molly did. Molly second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Ryan's father. Ryan's father is going to pick him. Point four, Police Department. Uh, Chief Mason recommends the appointment of Jesse Green to Lieutenant. Correct. Seated before you is Jesse Green. Jesse is currently our uh, Detective Sergeant. Jesse has been with our agency since 2010. He has served as our first ever detective, then promoted to de Detective Sergeant, and has been the supervisor in charge of investigations since 2018. Jesse is a rare find in many ways. He is one of those people who always brings calm and lowers tensions. He is kind, considerate, and always looks for the good in everything and everyone. If you say you hate something, he will find you five reasons as to why you may want to reconsider. And before he's done, you will likely have done so. We like to joke that if Jesse doesn't like you, you have some changes to make in yourself. <laughs> He leads by example, and I actually think that moving from a road supervisor role to an administrative role is going to be the most difficult part of the transition for him. He loves responding to calls and will take on the workload and reports before assigning them to his officers. He has never and will never ask an officer to do anything that he isn't willing to do himself, and this is the mark of a true leader, I believe. There is not a person in our building who wouldn't defer to Jesse's judgment with a question or a problem. He will be a perfect combination of leadership, compassion, and empathy in this new role. For these reasons, I would like to recommend Detective Sergeant Jesse Green for promotion to Lieutenant. 
If the board agrees, your motion would be to promote Jesse Green to lieutenant effective immediately in rank, but effective November 12th on payroll, and that's only because his lieutenant's position is actually included in the budget request that has to be approved by town meeting. So that's the first pay period after town meeting. Motion to accept Jesse Green as our next lieutenant. Thank you. Uh, to start immediately. And in rank uh, in November 12th. I'm November 12th. Second. Second by Molly. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Jesse has, uh, has chosen myself and the uh, current lieutenant. Mitch is taller, he's got a pen link. <laughs> <laughs> Does this mean when my car gets hit by a deer, he's not coming out? If it happens in the daytime, he won't. <laughs> well, I'm sure he's not going to be behind the desk all the all time. All right. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, Jesse. Well deserved. So, uh, I have one more quick thing that I'd like to do that does not require assent by the board. Uh, doesn't require a vote. It'll only take up another minute and a half of your time. Um, I'd like to ask Mike Romano to come up here. <clears throat> Again, this doesn't require a vote or anything. No, it's a surprise. I couldn't even put it on the agenda, otherwise you wouldn't know. So, seated before you is Sergeant Mike Romano. Mike is in charge of our, our day shift su supervision. Uh, Mike was hired by the town of Hadley as a special police officer in 2013. In June of 2014, he was promoted to part-time and then full-time in May of 2015. In November of 2018, he was promoted to sergeant. Before coming to Hadley, Mike worked as a part-time police officer and worked as a security officer at the Vermont Yankee Nuclear Power Plant. Mike is critical to our operations. He is a firearms and taser instructor He's also in charge of our cruiser fleet, ensuring that our cars are cared for and maintained. He heads up our training program for new officers and has been instrumental in the implementation and operation of our school resource officer program. Mike was also key to the implementation of our cruiser and body camera installation, and he also leads our crisis intervention team and our Marine Patrol unit. Mike does a lot more for our department but those things that we mentioned require a high level of attention and almost a perfectionist approach, which Mike has. Just look at his hair. <laughs> his, if you see his uniform, his cruiser, and his desk, they are perfection. In 2020, the Hadley Police Department adopted the insignia of Staff Sergeant to signify the senior most sergeant. With the promotion of Sergeant Green to Lieutenant, we thought it most appropriate to recognize Sergeant Romano's hard work and dedication here publicly and present him with the recognition of Staff Sergeant. Congratulations. Thank you, sir, for being with us. Appreciate it. Well deserved. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Sorry for taking up your entire room and raising That's time. Okay. That's here. okay. That's <laughs> okay. Nice to see everybody come. It's great. And Chief, you're not so bad yourself either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do a good job. Can you come back tomorrow? Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to pass?
public comments. Is there anyone here for public comments? Or is there anyone on Zoom, which I can't see? I can see Zoom. No one on Zoom. Is anyone here for public comments? Awesome. Uh, this meeting is being recorded. I'm sorry I didn't say that earlier. All right, the consent agenda. Consent agenda tonight, warrants, AP 2313, AP 2312, AP 2313S, PR 2305, PR 2306, Hadley Police Department return to patrol status, patrol officer, canine handler, Jacob Marini. Motion to accept the consent agenda as read. Second. Second, and any comments from uh, Office Ch uh, Chief Mason on Officer Marini? No, nope. uh, Jake did a great job as an acting sergeant. We didn't have enough spots for all the promotions, and he's simply returning to patrol status. Okay. All right, I have a motion by Randy and a second by Joyce. Joyce. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Passes. I didn't realize what you. Okay. All right, town fees analysis. We're going to discuss whether to have a subcommittee to review the town department fees. There's been discussed. Uh, Carolyn, do you want to talk about this? Yeah, so are you waiting to do public comment? There, there were some. There's, there's nobody. Oh, OK. Sorry. I, I apologize. Uh, Chief Mason was getting a contract. I miss who motioned and second the consent. Randy, I motion. Th thank you. I'm sorry. That's OK. okay. So the town department fees are sometimes questioned about whether they uh, cover the costs of doing business, so to speak. And perhaps it's the time to review that and possibly compare with other area towns to see how we're doing, just sort of as a thing to keep us up to date. Is that a request from Jessica or is it just all fees included everywhere? I I'm not sure where that request came up, but I think it's been ongoing. And it's been ongoing. The uh, Board of Health just recently posted that they have increased theirs. Here's a question. Um, in the past, we I know the towns have tried to do this every few years, you know, um, and it's kind of changed in pockets. But I don't remember having a subcommittee do it. Typically, the department heads themselves were the ones who came forward with, rec with recommendations. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm fine with a subcommittee. I'm just wondering why a, why a committee and not. Did somebody specifically ask for it? I well, obviously, somebody must have. Well, I think it's just been a general discussion. It's about been a general, it's been a concern a, of a mine concern. that mm -hmm. our, our fees are not up to date. Whether we ask our department heads to look at their fee structure and possibly compare it to neighbors, if you will, mm -hmm. and then give us a report. At, but that certainly can be done. And then have just that requesting compiled, that department heads. And we can review it. Yeah, I think yeah, each department has been in charge of that all along. All right, so well, let's just focus are they, them on it. Are, are they willing to do that? Do you think it's not going to put an excess burden? Well, on that's them? the question. They had they have in the past. I mean. It, it, yeah. There have been occasions where the department heads themselves came and said, we just want you to know, like, you know, Northampton, Amherst, and East Hampton seem to be charging a lot more than we are. Um, and other times it was uh, a direction from the select board asking them to, and they, they okay. did. Well, I, th I think it's a great idea. Yeah. I mean, I, I deal with planning boards throughout the valley, and the feeds are from here to here. Mm -hmm. so. And I know there's a lot of things that we deal with here that a lot of them have no fees. And so I think that everything ought to be looked at, not just where there's existing fees, but maybe where fees should be that aren't. Okay. 
So, Carol? I would suggest having a deadline. All right, certainly not before town meeting. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it, it might, you know, with their workload, it, it, I would certainly yeah. give them at least a month or Well, you month certainly and a half. can't start fees in the middle of the year. No, I we think that's the discussion the, of fees. Well, yeah. we can, but Could, it will give them the some time to do that. And I think, you know, after the first of the year, I think that would be before town meeting or before we get into budget wise is there something that we can do to change as the budget process goes on for annual town meeting then maybe they can come to us with any uh, requests for increases or not at that point yeah I, mean, I think having it in advance of the budget being finalized would be critical so i mean i, I would propose yeah. just a, an initial deadline of by January december 31st yeah that seems reasonable yeah. Well, with the holidays and stuff, I would go for well, they January. Well, do it earlier. Well, then we could yeah. say December 15th, and then they don't have to worry about holidays. Do you think that's more reasonable so people don't put it off and say, I can get it done? Yeah. Yeah. If, if people are like most people, it'll, it'll be last minute no matter what the, <laughs> the deadline is. So. Yeah. I, I mean, I think the first of the year is fine to, to bring it for us yeah. just in January. Yeah. All right. So by December 31st, so we can have it at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. All right, do we want a motion for that, please? Uh, make a motion to approve uh, the department, or uh, motion to request the department heads analyze their own town fees, um, do a comparative analysis, and um, submit any recommendations for changes to the select board by December 31st. Changes or additions? Or additions, that's true too. Or deletions. <laughs> I'll second that. Second by Randy. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. Eversource upcoming solar project. We have, we have our Eversource here. Yeah. I'm going to move my chair so I don't break my neck, so I can oh. watch the proposal. Are they putting something? Are y'all putting You're something not putting on? anything on the... Good evening, you? Madam Chair, and through you to the members. Thank you very much for allowing us to come before your board. Uh, we do have a presentation that's printed. If it's easier to have it on the print form, that's um, fine. we are having difficulties getting it. Okay. Does that work for you? That's fine. Yep. All right. Take it up. Get your exercise in. Mm -hmm. yes. Is this the property on Bay Road? This is our property at our area work center on Russell Street, um, 55 Russell. Oh, Russell going to the back of Bay Road. Uh, so it's going to be right on in. This is this is Tracy like, Redmond, our Tracy. community solar program, um, a community manager, community solar resiliency manager, um, who's going to be able to explain a little bit more of the, of the project. My name is Mike Kane. I'm the community relations representative for the area. Um, work closely with Carolyn, and certainly met with the chair and, and uh, select member uh, Randy. I met with on, on a, a community forum. So again, thank you for allowing us to come before you. Let me get this information in front of you. Subject matter expert will have everything you need to answer. Oh, thank you, Carol. Thank you. Um, but it's on our campus, and I don't believe we're going across the street on Bay. No, we're not. Well, it's not across the street. No. Across the street. So behind, so the back of our property, the, the gate, door. not the, not going farther across. Gotcha. I believe we have some other land over there. Yeah. So again, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for having us come talk to you. Um, we wanted to share with you a proposal that we have. Um, let me just start by giving a little bit of context um, about solar and battery energy in Massachusetts. Um, so I'm sure you're all aware, um, uh, and I should mention, yeah, I'm the manager of the Community Solar Resilience Program at Eversource. Um, so as I'm sure you're all aware, um, solar energy is growing quite a lot in Massachusetts, um, has grown substantially in the past decade. Um, currently, we have um, more than 100,000 um, customers who have solar, and we expect that number to grow quite a lot. Actually, by 2050, we expect that more than half of our customers will have solar. Um, it's a really uh, versatile type of technology. It can be um, you know, built in solar panels on the ground or in rooftop um, applications or in parking canopies, so it can be really applied in a lot of different ways. 
um, and it has the benefit, uh, of course, of producing clean energy, reducing fossil fuel emissions, and uh, benefiting communities. So it's something we're really excited about. Um, and we currently own 22 solar installations across the state, so it's a technology that we're familiar with. Um, the other thing I want to just share with you is about battery energy storage, and this is something that's becoming much more popular and, and widespread. When you pair batteries with solar, it allows the solar to be more versatile. It basically stores the energy from the solar panels and allows you to use that energy when it's needed most. So um, in the case that we'll be talking about, it would allow us to use the solar energy when there's the greatest demand on the grid, when it's needed most. Um, so uh, that, that's battery energy storage. Um, and Massachusetts as a state has been a leader in deploying battery energy storage, so it's something that the state has really encouraged. Um, and, and part of that is that um, last year, um, Governor Baker signed into law um, new legislation that uh, encourages and allows further development of solar uh, energy paired with battery storage. And in particular, what this law does um, is it allows, it does many things, but one small part of it is it allows electric and gas distribution companies to own solar generation facilities paired with battery storage. Um, so, so the way that this the legislation talks about it is that the electric and gas distribution um, uh, companies can work with municipalities to support their um, climate resilience goals and to build solar and storage projects on company-owned land. Um, and there's also an encouragement to um, give priority to municipalities with environmental justice populations as defined by the state. So we think this is really exciting legislation. It's something that we'd like to help implement. And when we heard about this, we thought about, OK, well, how can we do this? How can we um, build solar um, and storage on our properties? And so we started a review of our properties. and. Um, and I'll come to your property, the one in, um, on our property in Hadley just in a moment. But I do just want to mention some of the benefits of these types of projects. They can increase the commercial tax base. Um, they can bring market revenues. Um, so you sell the solar into the wholesale market, and there's, those revenues can benefit the host community. They reduce fossil fuel emissions. They um, in involve job creation and workforce development, and that's something that we would really like to promote in our program, to um, encourage workforce development in the communities where the solar projects are located. Um, they can also allow for electric vehicle charging of municipal vehicles, like police cruisers, if that's of interest. Um, they certainly provide increased resiliency for emergency response activities by locating the solar at our facilities. It will provide backup power to those facilities that do provide emergency response during power outages and it reduces the use of generators um, using the solar battery instead. So um, the particular project that we're talking about that we'd like to propose to you um, is the one at 55 Russell Street. Um, we see the opportunity here um, for about two megawatts of parking canopy and rooftop and ground mount solar. So there's really the opportunity at this property potentially to build all three kinds of solar panels. Um, that would produce about 2.9 gigawatt hours of clean um, solar energy annually. But just to give you a, a rough gauge of how much energy that is, that's roughly equal to the consumption of 480 homes over the course of a year. We're not proposing to use it for homes, but just to give you a sense of the scale. Um, we would include battery energy storage in this. And the, the basic concept is that um, during normal operations, when there's no power outages, what we would propose to sell the solar energy that we would build on our site into the wholesale market and get revenues from that solar. It'd be wholesale market revenues. It would be uh, renewable energy credits, or RECs. It would be clean peak energy certificates. And it would be forward capacity market revenues. So there's about four streams of revenues that would come from these solar projects during normal operations. And we'd like to share those revenues, basically give them um, to benefit Hadley and the environmental justice communities uh, in Hadley, in consistent with the legislation. When, there's, when there are power outages, uh, what we would propose is that we'd use the solar power to provide backup power to the uh, area work center uh, in Hadley. So basically using it on site there to support emergency response activities. So that's the basic concept of the project. And if you look at slide seven of what I passed out, it provides an aerial view of the project. This is just a conceptual layout. You know, Certainly it could change. Um, uh, based on feedback from, from you and from the planning board and from others, but um, it shows in red the uh, areas proposed for solar or battery development. You can see that the 1.72 um, acres is the rooftop of the building itself, so we'd have solar there. 
Um, there's some parking canopies to the south and to the east of that uh, building, and then potential for ground mount um, to the east of that. Um, so the, the white line showing going north to south on that property uh, is an easement, and we're, we're not proposing solar over the easement, the sewer easement. So if the select board supports this idea, and I'm here to you know, answer questions and see, um, see what you think of it, but if you support the idea, then we would definitely need to follow up with the planning board and with the conservation commission to, to talk about the details. Um, and, and what we're really asking for is a sense of you know, whether, whether you think this project um, you know, is something you're interested in. Um, if, you, if you do support the project, um, what we would ask for is a letter of support, just a brief letter. Um, we would like to share that letter with the Department of Public Utilities with, um, with the petition to create the project. We couldn't create the project unless DPU gives us approval. So this is a multi-step process. If DPU gives us approval, then we would come back to the town and go through the regular municipal permitting process um, and make sure that everything's uh, ticked and tied. So let me stop there and uh, see if you have any questions. Curious to know how long you got this battery storage. How much power can you store in those batteries, and how how would it be used in the real world in an emergency, and how long would it last? That's a great question, and we're we're in the you know this is the very early stages of mm -hmm. designing the project. We have a consultant who's doing some work to analyze the batteries, um, or analyze the potential for battery there. Um, so I can't tell you exactly how long it will last. Um, I, I can say that um, there's a similar project that we had proposed in Yarmouth where we were further along in the analysis. We've actually taken that one to DPU and proposed it. That battery um, uh, would last about 12 hours. So, and that's fairly typical for this kind of battery. Um, if you look back up um, on slide three, that, that picture, that white box, is what the battery looks mm -hmm. like. It's a fully self-enclosed container. Um, uh, so it's a, what we're thinking is that it would be a, likely a lithium ion battery. We're not necessarily committed to that, but that is, you know, the kind of typical type of battery. And, uh, and so 12 hours is probably what we could expect. So it would offset the use of the generator at the facility. It wouldn't necessarily replace it, you know, completely, but it would offset it. And then the battery could be recharged from the solar. So depending on the weather, you know, that battery would recharge and be able to be used again. So, and if you have three of those batteries, that would be 36 hours? I, you know, I'm not sure. I, I don't want to say that. I, 12 hours is what we found in Yarmouth, but we just haven't done the analysis for Hadley yet, okay. so I, I can't speak to that. Can I just ask about, um, so the environmental justice communities in mm -hmm. Hadley? So it yeah. looks like Hadley, you know, compared to surrounding towns, are hitting kind of the, I don't know if I want to refer to it as maybe the, the lowest um, qualifying level. That oh, yellow. I wouldn't say that. Um, I, I think that, um, so, so you're probably looking at the slide 10, yeah. which has the map. And, and these are just different designations. They're, they're all considered environmental justice communities. Those are designated by the state. This map is pulled up from the, the state mm -hmm. environmental justice mapper. So they all equally qualify. Okay. So for that, that particular population, which is focused on um, median household income, just like, so how, how do you ensure that the uh, individuals in those communities benefit. So is it like a credit on the supply side on the? That's a great question. And it's something that we would need to work out. And so um, we're proposing in concept that the, the credits would go to, to that community, but exactly which customers in that community or all of the customers in that community and exactly how that works is something we'd actually like community feedback on. Um, so what we propose to do is if the DPU approves the project, then we would come back to the community and, and ask for feedback um, through surveys, through public meetings, and, and you know, hear what the community thinks. But one way that it could work is to provide bill credits for customers that are low income or in the environmental justice areas. It could be a lump sum, say, before the heating season. Uh, that's one of the ways that we've thought about it. Does it have to be with people that have solar already? No, no, this no. Is definitely not. Because we wouldn't expect that you know, all the customers in that area would have solar. Really what we're envisioning is this is providing the benefit of solar power to the people who need it most in the environmental justice communities, whether or not they have um, solar. So where you're placing this solar is where, would, who is it going to benefit? So the, the, the solar power would be located at our facility. Right. And the power itself, it, if there's not a power outage, the power would be sold into the regional electric grid. 
And so it would you know, provide that power to the grid, but the revenues from that power then you know, is a dollar amount that could be distributed to the, to the community uh, in Hadley. And that's exactly what we would need to work out is exactly who and exactly how, but we'd want community feedback on that. Right. So, so that would be Eversource companies, uh, Eversource users? Eversource customers, yes. So we have a program where people have... Nexium. What did you say? Nexium. 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 Where, where people have gone to that system. So how does that affect that, or what would be offered to the customers? If I could just jump in real quick. Deregulation was put in place many years ago that doesn't allow the utilities to generate, I shouldn't say that, to, to do all three areas of electricity, the generation, the transmission, and then the local distribution in the streets. That was put in many years ago. Eversource does not generate electricity anymore. That We've sold off all of our assets that generate electricity. Think back to like the Mount Tom Coal uh, power plant. Yeah. Eversource has been out of that. This legislation allows the utilities to generate this type because you're really becoming a generator at this point. Now, we are, this is, you know, we have it in, in, a, in a few of our other areas and we do have um, solar in other areas. Um, but Nexamp is a separate entity. They're putting electricity back into the grid. Think of it going back into the system. We would be doing the same thing putting it back into the system or taking care of our, our facility and generating, obviously generating for the battery. I don't know if I'm answering that correctly for you, but. It would give people an option. Really, so this is not about. Down the road, I mean, I'm looking at. We're putting, we're, all we're doing is putting electricity back into the grid. Yeah. That we're, we're a supplier now of electricity. So everybody has the ability to, to get that electricity. The benefit is, we're generating more more electricity into the into the grid. And where does the tax benefit to the town come? There would be increased commercial tax tax base. So new, new growth. So we're we're doing new growth to our to our facility. The assessor would come out, and I, I know we don't have those answers right now, based on you know what the proposal is. But that would be back back to your assessors. New growth. And so what you're here is because you can't go forward until you hear how this board feels about the project and whether or not we would support this. That's right. We don't want to propose the project unless you support it. You know, this is something that needs to be in partnership with the municipalities. That's something that we would want and that's what's called for in the legislation. So um, if, if you think that it's a good project and we hope that you do, um, we would ask for a letter of support and then we could move forward um, as I said, we'd, I think we'd want to talk with the, the Planning Commission and the Conservation Commission, and we can move forward with DPU and kind of go, it's a multi-step process. For siting? Yes. For, for basically siting it in the end. This is just, this, we're different than a, another commercial business trying to come in. They wouldn't have to go to the DPU first. We have to get basically the blessing from the Department of Public Utilities from, from, um, from the town. So the town is sending a letter on our recommendation to the DPU, and then we fall back into the process of citing it with you at the local level. And again, this is property that you already own? Correct. That's right. right. Sounds to me like this is one of those things that we should think about and vote at our next meeting. How, how critical is it for you to? What is your time? Are you have timeline. a timeline that's yeah. tight? Um, no, that would be fine. We, um, we would hope to submit this um, to the Department of Public Utilities before the end of the year. So. I'm not sure how often you meet, but I, I think Every that would be weeks. fine. Oh yeah, that would be fine. And and if you have questions as you think about it, if you would like to come back and ask questions, we'd be absolutely glad to provide additional information. That's we good. may have we may have uh, other residents who have comments that we would hear about it, and you always have a thought after the fact. Is oh, I forgot to ask that. So I think yeah. giving us to our next meeting would be great. That would be fine. And just so everybody knows they would have to go for site plan review before the planning board Correct. and deal with the conservation commission because that property is in a hundred year foot. Correct. So it's not, if we were to give our blessing, it just gives them the opportunity to go to the state and get that approval and then they have to come back and go through, jump through all the hoops that they, anybody. We're just, 
the right. kickstart. Yeah. yeah, correct. That's a good way to say it. I like that. <laughs> yeah. We haven't heard that one yet, the <laughs> kickstart. <laughs> All right, let's put this on. Mm -hmm. next meeting. And okay. if, um, Mike, just uh, in preparation, can you send me a template of the letters? Absolutely. That would be helpful. Um, Dan and Bill okay. are both on. I don't know okay. if you, you want to get any of their input Anybody or questions. in the audience have a question? No. No. Thank you very much for coming in your presentation, and hopefully you'll join us in two weeks to answer the questions we figured. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you for your you time. So much. Thank you. Thank you for Thank you. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Moving on to Valley Bike Update. Carolyn? Sure. Um, I sent you all a train of emails of um, uh, talking with Carolyn, um, who is now in charge of, of the Valley Bike. If you remember, we had two gent gentlemen who came before us. Was it late, early summer? Right. Um, and so when I, uh, I, in preparation of more discussion about it and in preparation of, of what possible expenses outside of that pad was going to be, I did send that email to Carolyn to ask her um, for more, to answer some of the questions about costs, some more specifics. And as you can see in those correspondence and the MOU, there are some unknowns about additional expenses. Um, I don't feel, um, that we're read, just as in my perspective as a town administrator, putting it on the warrant right now, I, I am concerned that there's some unknown expenses that we don't know, that have not been finalized. Um, as well as I did bring it up because it was going to be on the warrant with the finance committee who reviewed the warrant today and voted, um, they, had, they also had concerns. There was no official uh, vote. I just wanted to know what their feelings were so I could share that with you. And there were concerns similar to what those questions were that I had had in the emails. Well, and there were questions we had when Chris Curtis was here earlier in the summer, which was, we don't want to have to pick up any of the expenses because we don't have the money to do that. And maybe we could deal with administrative fees, but if nothing is set yet, we're, I don't think, I think you're right. We don't want to commit to doing anything unless there's a, more firm plan. The only thing I'm questioning is when, and, and I probably should have gone back and listened to the meeting. I, I thought, I, I think we have one of these classic order of things issues. So they don't, if I remember the conversation is they wanted to know that the town was willing to pay the, that administrative fee, that 4,000. 750. Yeah, for you well, yeah whatever the, the number is in here. Um, that the town would be willing to find a path forward to pay that as long as they could get the private sponsorship through whether it was Whole Foods or whoever to pick up the cost of the pad if that's necessary if the sidewalk was wide enough like it says in here maybe they don't have to and that they were actively talking to them but that if at town meeting, if we wanted to bring this to town meeting, we could write the warrant in such a way that it was contingent upon all of that happening. Otherwise, we wouldn't move forward. So what happened, because I also spoke with Carolyn. Um, Carolyn Mish, or? Carolyn yeah, Mish. sorry, I meant to say Mish. Um, <laughs> Chris Carolyn's. Curtis has left Valley Bike. Yep. And when he left, everything just dropped. Mm -hmm. And she, when I spoke to her last week, was on the job the first day. Yeah. So she's not been actively mm -hmm. pursuing what's going on because she just started. Yeah. So So maybe we defer it to annual town meeting then to give Carolyn that Mish time right. to. Yeah. I, I think that makes sense. I agree with I that. want more I, information too. I don't think we can afford no. any added. Even for this type of it's, it's there, oh, There's no location that's been totally no. identified right. or confirmed. I, and that's my biggest concern is to, to be working on a private, to be yeah. paying for something on a ifs. private. The right. easement, it's going to cost us more in legal fees than the pads. I'll make cost. a motion to take it off the uh, fall town meeting. It's actually not on. We never put on. it on. Okay. So I just wanted to get your agreement so, that okay. yeah. it stays yeah. on. Yeah. That's fine. I don't think you need to vote. I mean, I don't want to drop the discussion. I do sure, think it's important not. and there is yeah. a lot of public support bring it up for again it. when they bring more but, information. Yeah. But yeah, we need we more information before we can make a decision. Yeah, and I, I also think we need a lot of information to go to town meeting with it, uh, trying to sell it contingent upon 
is going to be uh, very difficult in my opinion. So, and even though they only want $4,800 a year, right now that's a lot of money for us. Uh, we're going to get a very big shock at, once we see the town meeting warrant as to what we need to purchase for the town to survive another however many years. So, uh, I, I just think it's not a great idea right now. Agree with me. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, DPW Building Feasibility Study. Um. So we had left it as if you had any suggestions or talk or had anybody that was interested to let to let me know. I did do some poking around. I have a few names that I wouldn't recommend because I haven't reached out to them. But if you're comfortable with me, with some of the names that have been given to me, I can make those calls. But if you have anybody in particular, please let me know. That would be great. Wally Sikowski reached out to me. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the Wally name. Wally Sikowski. Oh, good. Make it a wintertime job. Well, he, he seemed <laughs> pretty interested in it, so. Because what we have now is Scott, Gary, Tommy, someone from finance, and someone from capital. I know from finance, I think it's Andy will be. So. So we need capital. That sounds like almost well, a full company. That is you. Okay, yeah, so that I didn't know if you if he had about, yeah. talked. Okay. Yeah, I'm, and, I'm in. and Randy. So that sounds like a pretty full compliment, right? No, there. we need one more. I need an odd. I need two residents. Yeah, we want a, we we want an odd resident. number. You, need, you got Wally and one other you need. One other resident. Okay. And we can, you know, you can just shoot me some suggestions or g give me a call if you've got some names. So I don't want to catch anybody off guard who hasn't sure. shown right. interest. Sure. And typically, wouldn't um, usually we ask the individual to just send an email to Jennifer just saying I'm interested in being on the committee so we have something in writing. Okay, I'll tell him that. Jane, or you have to reach out to, to the him or you want to? DPW, right? Um, I'd yes. have to get his contact information. Are I mean, you if you it? have it, I, if it's I'll easier, yeah, that. that'd be great. Do you think I should be? What's well, that? Usually the liaison is on. Liaison to DPW should be on the committee. Um... As a, as, a, as a select board member or as a town person? Well, select board member, or you could be an alternate with Randy. Just so. Yeah, I mean, it's really your. I mean, it's your call, but normally. Well, I'll ponder it. Ponder My new favorite well, word, we, we and it might have come from committees. Michael Kane, but we marinate did. on that for a while. <laughs> I I My new favorite word. When I did the school one. <laughs> Yeah, but like I was on the um, library building committee, but I wasn't the liaison to the library. Oh, okay. I thought you were. Mm -mm. And then Christian wasn't the liaison to the yeah, council. I think it's just a just question of whether center. the liaison wants to be on or yeah. not. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's fine. And you I have enough on your plate, that's okay too. I just got to say, yeah. It's I fine. did speak with Mike Richards, who's the engineer who came and gave the presentation. He has five, five sites, and he's going to hold off until that committee mm -hmm. gets so that they can take a look at those five sites okay. and get the whole introduction, okay. so. Okay. All good. right, so we're leaving this to Carol, basically. All right. I don't think we need a motion or anything, right? We're just agreeing to delegate the authority to Carol? Yep, Agreed. Yeah, that's Agreed. great. Agreed. Agreed. All right, Alex. Adley Public Media Access uh -oh, Channel. Oh, he's got a big pad. Look out. Yep. <laughs> it's empty right now, though. Oh. Do you want me to turn the camera so it's on you? Or you can press two and you'll see me. Oh. She gets the fun job. Yeah. Pushing the buttons. One is the select board, two is me. Actually, two is Carolyn right now. Yeah, but you can turn that camera to me. And then. It's exciting. Hold on. We might need, do you know how to zoom out? Oh no, I'm gonna do super. Yep, yep. There you go. Okay. Nice. Okay. Good, Good job. job. Well, well, do you want me to be my production assistant? <laughs> sure. <laughs> part time select board, part time. <laughs> yeah, right. All right. Um, so I believe last time we left off, the select board was gonna come up with some goals for the, the Highland Media Department? I wasn't here, so I'm oblivious. I yes, you were. Huh? 
I, I, I just know that we meeting. wanted to make sure that we we were going to talk about how many channels we had. We have two. No, that was a no. That was that was earlier. That's no, I don't want to talk about that right now. I don't think that's an immediate concern right now, but it, okay. it's something that could be talked about in the so future. So, Alex, my only problem is is on the agenda. It is talking about that channel. Oh, it, it is. Didn't have goals down. So, I have to be more. I have to when when I'm. We put the agenda together based on because we had talked about the channels, but we were going to discuss it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, do you have any information on the channel? That, remember, you, there was three channels, and yeah. you wanted to. We do have three channels. We used to. Um, I just, just a question for select board. Do you, I, my personal opinion, we don't have enough content for to justify two channels um, at the moment. Would the select board be open to having one channel instead of two channels? Well, we don't want to give up a channel. We may not use it right now. Right. No, no, that's not what that's I'm saying. That's what you mean, right? Yeah. yeah. The, you would only be focused on one channel. Exactly. Programming content for one channel. Mm hmm Or what I've been doing lately, all the government stuff I've been doing on 192, and then I've been broadcasting on 191. Right. Well, I think that's something we, we did talk about last time, about a reformation of the advisory committee that it would help with that mm -hmm. con input regarding programming and content mm -hmm. um, but I mean certainly at this point I mean I would think whatever you can handle <laughs> you know and if your opinion is that the highest and best use for you is focusing on the one channel I'm not opposed to it unless you came to us and said well I'm going to drop all of this other you know, so I think we'd have to know more about what that looked like. Right. I mean, I don't have an exact plan because I've been doing 10 jobs all at once. <laughs> so, um, you've been putting a tremendous amount of stuff on YouTube. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yes. Yeah. So Definitely. Way more than has ever been. Yeah. Uh, and it looks great. Thank you. Yeah. Nothing but positive feedback from yeah. the community. I mean, some people have gone to me with um, their concerns, but I, I do my best to make sure their concerns are heard and I get try to get it fixed. So, what um, kind but, of concerns are you hearing? Um, I think at one point, Select Board was not on, was not broadcasting live, and it wasn't reruns. So I made sure there was reruns of that. Um, We're like Lassie, good rerun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then there's like a couple of things I can't figure at the top of my head, but it's nothing too, too major, um, nothing I can't handle. Okay. Uh, so, but otherwise, I've been hearing a lot of, a lot of good feedback from it. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I do recall the last meeting, and I and I think that that was the intent that you were looking for some feed, um, feedback regarding goals. Because I mm -hmm. remember I said a couple of things off the cuff, and then the, you wanted us to go back, spend some think time. Yeah, and exactly. And I'm I'm wondering if it has to be in select board meeting or they can just email me. They can, app, yeah. You can yeah. Email him. So we don't have to. Just don't reply to all. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and is this the time we should start putting on the agenda about needing a committee for the? Uh... Yeah, I was going to talk about that in the town administrator's okay. report because I'm just right. not gotten a response for for, you. for either. Yep. So. Are you are you seeing any voids that you? Would, would like to fill with something that we were typically were not doing right now mm -hmm. stuff that was in other communities that worked or any kind of that nothing stuff? that i can think of at the moment i mean um obviously the more we i get things a little more established i get assistant in the more i'll see probably so um and in fact i'm going to go to a couple of career fairs and try to get some uh, uh resumes from area colleges so mm -hmm. all right Good. Yeah, and that's, that's kind of it. Any other questions for Alex? No. Doing a no. great job. Thank you. Thank Glad you. Thank you for all you're doing. Here. You're welcome. Glad Thanks, to be here. Alex. Everybody enjoys Thank it. Thank you. All right. Uh, any other items not anticipated 48 hours in advance? Town administrator's report. All right, as I said, I, actually before we started the meeting, I mentioned that it's the town hall was bustling today. And so we had um, Joan working on workman's comp audit. Uh, Powers and Sullivan was here with the, um, the accountant was here as well. Um, 
reviewing the FY22 annual audit. Um, so Linda was very busy um, and trying to find space. So we've continued to clean out that uh, meeting room uh, so that because our, ta our town council will be coming on a regular basis to do office hours. Lori, our accountant, also needs a place to stay, but it was really starting to get cluttered. And so I actually had Lori and Linda in their office, which I will never do again, <laughs> two, two, two money people together. <laughs> but um, uh, so it was really busy. Uh, the Finance Committee did meet t tonight, right before this meeting, and they did approve um, everything that's on the, the warrant. Uh, Capital Committee has reviewed and approved uh, all, the, all of the requests. Uh, the warrant is uh, being reviewed by legal. Uh, they have the motions now and are, will be uh, replying to those, but it looks good. They've responded quickly. That's been wonderful. Like within two days, I'm getting responses back from them. So on the 19th, the select board will make their recommendations for each article, you know, so we have it under the motions, how you guys voted. Um, I am going to be posting on the 13th, so I do need to have you just sign that I can come in and sign the, the warrant so we can post it. Um, you'll still be voting on each article so the town knows how you guys have voted on it. Um, so just a, just a nudge that I'll need you in before the 13th. But I'll, I'll, I'll send you out an email when I've got the final copy for you. So we're meeting on the 19th, and we'll be voting that night. And then we have the forms on the 20th, sorry. Well, that was my question. Remember we were talking about the, whether we want to do it on... Um, do we want to have two meetings, or do we want to combine those two? You've got uh, Board of Health also. The 19th. Yeah, so we could we could still do the public forum on the 20th. Okay. Do we have a lot on the 19th? I, I have to look on my. It's on my whiteboard in my office. We have the, the solar. 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 Mm -hmm. That won't take long. I would hope that if uh, we're doing Chimera interviews Road for the Board there. of Health that we don't have too much it's on Board that. of Health, Chimera Road, yeah. sign policy are the things that are on right now. What policy? Uh, a sign policy about where signage is placed on town property, I believe. I'm, I'm, this is a carryover. It's like been a carryover for, for a couple of meetings. Yeah. Yeah. I, so I'm, I'm playing catch up. I just carried it over. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't look, looking at the uh, proposed agenda in drafts, which is very nice to have. Thank you. Um, there's not that much so far. How many it's two weeks away. How many articles on the warrant? Uh, ten. No, that shouldn't take that long to go through. And the form would be here, correct? Yeah. Um, we would also do it remote, too. We would do a hybrid yeah. as well. The only thing, um, the only thing I would see would be the problem is typically the PowerPoint presentation has your recommendations in it. Um, I could plug them in as we move through the meeting and have them ready if you started if you did your meeting at 530 ran through the agenda major recommendations I could literally plug them in and then you could do the form at 7 p.m. if you wanted to do it all in one night but if you wanted to do it two nights I mean that that would be completely that would work too but if you want to do just one night I can I don't care I can I make like it work night there's there's 13 articles, but honestly, two of them are pretty much housekeeping from old Warren articles. Um, I think the one that's probably going to have the most discussion, I, I, I'm guessing, is possibly you know, um, capital. Although it's all borrowing within the levy, uh, the resolution would probably have the most discussion. Possibly, I don't know. So, is it possible for us to get draft copies of the warrant? So I would love to give you the final draft, and I'll probably have that tomorrow. Absolutely, I can get that okay. to you. Okay. Yeah. I'm finding it way. It doesn't yeah, really it doesn't matter, matter to, me. to me. I mean, that's, sometimes we so try what, to cram what things are, into one what, meeting. What day are we on here? <clears throat> Today we're the fifth. We're well, I know, but I mean, when when do you want the? Either the 19th or the 20th, because town meeting is the 27th. Correct. Well, the 19th is for the, uh, the select the board meeting, board meeting. Right. but whether we add the public forum to that. Or do it the next day. Or do it just separately the next day. Yeah, my, my only concern with pushing them together, and this comes back, I had a kind of question about executive session too, about the ordering of things. It's just, if it's a public forum, obviously you want to start on time, you know, and, it, and if we're trying to have our select board meeting, so we start at six, 
can we reasonably get through everything in the hour or then we'd have to cut if we're not done with everything go to the public forum and then go back to the select board meeting it can just get a little messy mm -hmm. we i, I kind of like it when it's just clean we everybody knows the start time and we're done so that sounds like you're in favor of a two evening event and i'm fine with that Mom. Yeah. I, I agree I with what you're saying myself. Yeah. it's cleaner because yeah. if we do have a discussion that carries on right mm -hmm. okay. i don't care mm -hmm. one way so if you're worried about, I mean, another option, if you're worried about it two nights in a row, do you want to meet next week? The select board meeting. <laughs> do what And then next public week? forum the next week. Um, Just another board thought. Of health, can board of health make next week? That's already so, posted for the 19th. Right. All, and you already have, you brought, we've already the changed candidates the candidates everything. several so times. I, I don't think two nights in a row is okay. a big deal. No, we've done it before. Okay. Okay. Right. I'll make a flyer for you. Okay. All right, I'll move on. Um, let the Russell School survey uh, will be included in the November tax, November 1st tax bills with a link or in a QR code, and hard copies are going to be available at the library and the town hall and the senior center. Um, I, I did get some advice from other town employees that in the, in, historically you had given the town administrator, you had given David Nixon permission to make some to screen out whether what's appropriate to go in a tax bill or not. So I did take that assumption that you would you would agree with that, that the survey was okay to go out there, to go out in the tax bills. Good, okay. Um, also, uh, Molly had mentioned at the climate uh, forum that there was a question about the, the dike. And um, ironically, yesterday I got an update from our engineers Perfect. who would have thought <laughs> so I thought I would publicly let you guys know what was going on with the dike as the, as part of the town administrator's report um, so the work is con con is continuing to develop conceptual remedial approaches and costs to address seepage and stability for the current levy and the rail trail berm embankments um, work began to evaluate the floodplain impacts associated with the conceptual levy proposed along Bay Road. This involved coordination with FEMA to obtain and review the latest draft flood model for the Connecticut River. This also included a review of the UMass Amherst study for future river flows due to climate impacts. Woodard and Curran, who is our engineers, Rich Niles is our lead engineer on this project, participated in a meeting with the town on August 15, 2022 to discuss the status of the project. Woodard and Curran coordinated with the town and um, <coughs> ACOE to secure funding for planning efforts related to flood risk communications through their Silver Jackets program. And I'm sorry, I did not write the acronym down for that. Um, but this is, this is a free program. We, we wrote a grant for it. Um, and it's, so it will help. Um, it will just give us more educational aspects of it. It's going to be educating people about floods, about future planning, things like that. So there's no cost to the town. No. Yeah, and one of the, you said ACOE, so I'm assuming that's the Army Corps of Engineers? Yes, thank you. And what's their you. role? Yeah. So they have a they sub, they have a, a sub entity called the Silver Jackets Program. And it's just like, mm -hmm. they put it in the, when a FEMA response, you have blue jackets responding, police, you have red jackets, fire. This is called the Silver Jackets and it's educational. It's an educational aspect, aspect of um, when you have a flood prone area in your community. Okay, so they still don't actually do <laughs> we they are educate. they still do will not do not have any okay. jurisdiction over Hadley's levy yep. so, they, they, built um, it, but they don't want it right and work uh, is continued to prepare the operation and maintenance plan which we will um, which I works uh, pretty frequently with rich on as I learned as I uh, prepared the budget last year we had about sixteen thousand dollars I kind of put the lowest level um, so we have different levels of maintenance. So each year I'm going to try to add one level onto it each year. So that's where we are right now. Um, so I know you've, you've heard me talking about the, um, my desire to have an updated classification study and a, since most importantly a succession plan as well. And um, I became aware of the community compact grant was funding classification studies. So I just went to Jen Travato our HR manager and said, hey, could you look into this? And we thought we were just, you know, sending an email, say, yeah, we're interested. And like, what was it, two weeks later, 
we got twenty thousand dollars through the classification plan. Normally, I would update with you, but this was really just a, like, hey, let's see what happens, and then ten thousand dollars for a succession plan. This is so Perfect. important for our non-union personnel. I cannot tell you how important this is, mm -hmm. and it's going to really put us in a good place to make sure we we uh, that know that we're appropriately um, uh, paying for our non-union personnel. So, so in the past, we have had studies, and they have been done, and. I don't know how, because I was not on the board at that time, I only listened to the studies. The studies were done. I don't know how the person was chosen who did the studies. How will that happen? So we will follow, because of that price, we, we will follow getting some three quotes, but I, I'm really familiar with this, and I am familiar with a lot of the, um, um, the companies that do it, and I, I know one in particular that's very good, so I will get... I will reach out to all three of them, and Jennifer and I can do a conference call with the three of them. But I, the, the key here is is that we, we follow through with it. That's the key, and that's going to be my goal, is that we follow through with it and make sure that there's funding to support the non-union staff. Yeah. So, Sounds great. great. Thank yeah, you very so that much. That was great. That was Thank a great you, surprise. Um, and then just to let you know, I am having trouble. I did reach out to the the charter review committee that was in place, and I'm not getting a full response of people that are still interested, so I, I just want to put that plea out. We'll probably have to put something on the website that we are, because we're very behind in that charter review. Um, Alex is aware of that as well, so um, I think we're going to have to put, it, you're okay with that. I need to read, we need more members. I only had maybe two reply that they were still interested. And when is that contract done? Is it 23 or 24? 24. 24. Mm -hmm. Right, and Alex? Just, I think it's a long. We just got to get that. We have to get that. The, the outreach done. Yeah, it's yeah. the outreach and the survey that's really long. To be clear, it's it's charter spectrum. Yes, I'm, I'm, thank yeah, you. No, I'm just saying when you hear charter, I didn't want somebody thinking we're yeah. talking about like the town charters. This is yeah. like the biggest complaint in town. Yes. Which is right. The yes. internet the service. And, and I know Alex yeah, has some good ideas, TV. so it'll. Yeah. And he's really going to help lead that, right, TV. Alex? Thank so, you. TV. Okay. <laughs> So that's um, that's all I have. I think that's it. All right. Do we have any select for oh, items for future discussion? I have one. Um, yes. Actually, on the it will be before our next meeting. So on the 17th, uh, the planning board is having a Zoom meeting on the uh, results of the housing. So that's at. 6:30 on October 17th, and it's virtual. It's Let's virtual. Yes. Yeah. So that's the housing production plan. Well, correct. Results. So people are interested in how those um, surveys went. Oh, trunk or treat. So we have trunk or treat. That'll be after our next meeting too. Mm -hmm. um, but we're doing trunk or treat on October 28th, uh, bearing good weather. Thank you. What hours are that? Five to seven. Five to seven. If you would like to participate and decorate your vehicle and be there, just drop them a line and uh, they supply the candy. So you just have to decorate your vehicle and they will. Um, to records at hadleyma.gov. Yeah. Okay, this was actually are there things that we want to put on future agendas, not announcements? Yeah, I've got one. Yes. Um, so when, I think back in, I want to say maybe June, we started talking about priorities. Um, I think we talked about communication, um, improving communication, just kind of as a broad topic. Um, yeah, this broad topic um, being something. But I would love to, again, try to figure out how do we get to a little bit bigger picture, um, I would love to talk about doing more informational forums for the community itself so that when issues of great significance like, you know, the status of the dike, um, I, mean, I mean, I'd like just the, the capital budget. I mean, we'll sit there at a special town meeting and people will vote on all of these line items and yet there are some pretty significant uh, yeah. capital outlays that are out there that are going to come at us. So trying to figure out how we get that information out. So I would just love to put that on as an agenda so we can maybe brainstorm 
on how to do some of that planning here to position ourselves to do it for the community. Well, that would be, I would think that that would be the capital planning committee um, having, because you set up with all the departments on their five-year plan or whatever they might need for the future, so you do now and future requests. So there's already something there between DPW, school, uh, fire, police. They should all have a capital plan um, already working on it in progress. So I, I can address that. I so, think what Molly is saying oh. is we need to get that plan out so that the residents in general hear about it instead of waiting until meetings show up. Well, and, and a capital, capital plan, just like your budgets, should exist to support the strategic plan. So the strategic plan for the town is more than just capital. Right. It, I mean, it involves zoning, you know, planning board issues, uh, staffing. Um, but I think each, I think each department, I know where you want to go and have people be aware of all this going on, but if they would just tune into our planning board meetings, every week on the planning board there, they do um, planning for future meetings and what they want on their meetings and stuff. I mean, they're very good about that. And the school department does too, so I'm not exactly sure. Um, well, I'll give how, you an many, example. how many meetings do you want to have a year, for God's sake? No, it's not, it's not about the number of meetings, but I'll give you an example, Joyce. You're affiliated with Cooley Dickinson Hospital. Yeah. Cooley Dickinson Hospital has a str strategic plan yeah. right now, and they have four pillars that they're talking about. Mm -hmm. And they're making it clear to everybody where they're going to be spending their time and effort over the next few years, mm -hmm. right? I think the town of Hadley, with the select board as its, as its leadership, we should be doing the same thing for the residents and business owners. So of the, the long-range planning is basically what what you're talking about, mm -hmm. whether it be two pillars, four pillars, whatever it might be. You're still looking at a long-range plan that we have in effect already. We have a long-range planning committee. We already have a long-range. Um, well, we have a ma an updated uh, master plan. Uh, we do. Yeah. I mean, so we go off of that of what's already there instead of being redundant and reworking it look, at, look at the master plan and see what's going on with that you, you're you're reworking things instead of just looking at what's already done no i think we're, we're trying to find a way to communicate them and and the master plan is there um but like this housing production uh mm -hmm. survey that we just completed yeah that's going to inform the planning what board in particular, what people are looking for. Correct. But then you have to put it into the context of, is that nice and we're going to put it off on a shelf or are we going to actually think it's important and we do something about it and how would that translate to revenue? I mean, I think people are looking for a bigger picture and every time we go to town meeting, it's important for people to vote in the context, not only in what's put in front of them, but they want to know what's coming next. Right. So, I, 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 again, I don't, we don't want to have the discussion tonight because it's not on right. the agenda, but I mean, I think yeah. we need to have this discussion to figure out how to move that ball forward. So, so taken. All right, let's put that on the agenda. Somewhere, not next week, not <laughs> the next meeting. No. no. <laughs> We talked about um, evaluation, and yes, I we think, still need to after. And I and I offered. I think you weren't here at that meeting. I offered for instead of us doing an evaluation of Carolyn, that I think it would because Molly and uh, Randy, you haven't really worked with Carolyn that long. You've worked with her for a few months now, but not over a period of time where I don't think that you actually would make a, do a good evaluation of her for what she actually does. I know you're, you're on top of things and you, you know, you're in there and you have conversations with her, but to me it would be behoove us to, uh, it was suggested a 360 where people in town hall who work with her every day um, do an initial evaluation and what their rapport is and what, how they work with her and how she works with them, um, doing something of that nature. Oh, hang on, <laughs> time out. Um, you did. You did mention it last time, and I was like, "Yeah, I'm fine 
I, mm -hmm. I understand it's 360 degree evaluations. Mm -hmm. They've been around for, they were the big thing back in the 90s so everybody started okay. doing them. Yeah. So I, I, the way I took that um, wasn't that we were relinquishing. Oh no, no, no. But so I, I mean, Randy and I are still want to participate in an evaluation oh, yeah. process. But I but mean, I, that's only but appropriate. I think that I think but we want to get other input as well, yes. right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I and think, Carolyn would be doing a self-evaluation. Right, that's what I was going to say. We need to hear from Carolyn her list of things that she has done and accomplished, and things that mm -hmm. she has on her wish so which, list to which get card, done. So, which which card are you going to put first? They tend to be done simultaneously. I, you know, going to have one big meeting, and they're all going to come together. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's something I'm sure Jen could provide us with guidance on, right? You could maybe propose a process to us, and then we can. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, we are contractually obligated. To. Well, it's right. in her. It's her we, contract. We, have, we so. have no contracts, but she does. Um, yeah. um, well, that's know, what I mean. Do the evaluation. Yeah, yes. you know, it's a yearly thing. Yes, it's on her. The yearly thing. Right. That we signed. Yeah. All right. So that needs to continue. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. I have a different question, which is. The November set of meetings, I will not be here the third week in November. And that, or the second week in November. You're not going on another cruise, are you? Yeah, I am. Stay away Good from for COVID. you. Stay away from where? COVID. I know, it's out there. Get it once you're done. You. Yeah, right. <laughs> Till the next uh, time. That's my plan. So, our first meeting is going to be on the second? Yes. And our third one was going to be the 16th. Correct. So, what if. Well, Your house for Thanksgiving? Sounds good. Meeting? Sounds <laughs> good. We're here. Yeah, I'm word. not here on the 7th. That second week in November, I'm not here. Okay. And you're gone that week anyway. I'm gone right? that week anyway. Okay. So, we do the. The first. First. And I, probably you don't want to do it the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, but maybe we do. What the Wednesday we, before Thanksgiving? Yeah. Or what if we did it a different night? Well, she's still not going to be here. She's gone the whole time. I'll be here. Go I'll ahead. be back. Jennifer she's, has a question. I, I just, with respect, I would remind you that it's posted online that you meet on the first and the third Wednesdays of the month. And people sort of set their schedules to plan for that accordingly. And I'm not saying that obviously you don't have the right and ability to change your meetings as needed. But as we're getting ready and getting and moving into um, license renewals and things like that, it would be beneficial to sort of keep it moving. Yeah, and 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 you know that y'all have y'all don't always shift your meetings around like that. And I'm just I'm putting it out there that this is what your schedule is and this is what people have come to depend on. Scott plans his first and third Wednesday nights around you. So th thank you, Scott. I, I would just I would I would suggest perhaps with lots of respect that maybe you continue on and if one member, even the chair is perhaps absent, the meeting could continue on and if there's something that needs to be held for your conversation and it could be. If that's okay. Works for me. It's okay for me. Yeah. We'll just try to have a little bit lighter agenda that night. Okay. Right. And we, we may try, want to change the twenty first to the twenty eighth. We 28th, try to keep so them light. The twenty first. First is December. Just because it's so close to Christmas. If we did the twenty eighth the last week. Well be, but that just that either. flies in the that, face of that, what yeah. Jennifer yeah. just said too. Okay. Yeah. Just keep going. But just keep Do going on and the same schedule and, and if it turns out that we aren't gonna have a quorum or we aren't able to go then the meeting gets yeah we've totally. we've done that before too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll stay first and third. Hallelujah. All right, what else? I've got some condolences. Okay. Wasn't here the last meeting, so we have a few. Um, we have condolences for the family of Peter Yeski. We have condolences from the select board from to the family of Frank Drosdell. Uh, condolences to John, uh, family of Donald Vitkowski. Uh, family condolences to Justina Krasowski. Family of condolences to Jean Ann Munt. Uh, condolences to the family of Michael Ryan. 
and I don't know if anybody mentioned the last time, but uh, condolences to the family and friends of Christine Jones. <coughs> I would like to add that there'll be a servants of service of remembrance for Jean Baxter Saturday mm -hmm. at 11 at First Church. Could you read this because I'm coughing too much? <coughs> the Amherst College Board of Trustees requests the honor of your presence at the inauguration of Michael A. Elliott, class of 92, 20th president of Amherst College, October, Friday, October 28th, 2022, 4 p.m. Amherst College, Main Quad. Uh, join us for a community reception on the main quad immediately following the installation ceremony. Uh, request by uh, to respond by October 14th. Is that for everybody? Is there anyone here who can go? I can't go. That's the night of the friends wine tasting here. Oh, but that, I, I thought you were putting that out to the community. <coughs> so <coughs> that's we're looking for a board member. Just a select board representative, please. Jane, could it go? So she thought she would open it up to y'all all to see who could go. Not I. Not I. What time? 4 p.m. Dad gum it. I guess I can go. <laughs> <laughs> Yours. It's <laughs> old. Are you going to RSVP for yourself? Yeah, I can do that. Cool. Yeah. Please. I can do that. Okay. Thank you, Molly. Sure. Okay. Thank you. I think um, this is the first time I remember being. I don't remember when Biddy Martin came in if we got invited, so that's kind of nice that they're including us. So. Yeah. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second by Randy. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 See you in two weeks.